Well, the prodigal returns. I want to talk to you, J.I. Sure, darling, sit down. Would you like a little coffee? Or have you fallen back on your old ways of having a little belt before breakfast? I don't want to sit down, and I don't want any coffee. The only thing I do want from you is some answers. Have you moved back to Dallas? You're getting a little tired of the celibate life, are you? I flew in early this morning to try to find out exactly what you hope to accomplish by shutting down Farlow Refineries. Oh, Clayton's shutting down, is he? Well, maybe I can make him a deal for those refineries. Come off it, J.R. I know you. You're buying up all his oil. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. If I did, it's none of your damn business. When you moved out of my bed, I stopped owing you any explanations. Well, you just gave me the answer I was hoping for. It was you. You're taking your anger at me out on the Farlows. Well, I'm delighted to see how concerned you are with the Farlow family. Perhaps you ought to be a little more concerned about our son. Send it back home where he belongs. Never. It's going to be a lot sooner than that. We go to court for our divorce hearing in exactly one month. I won the preliminary hearing, and I'm going to win this one. You're going to lose this fight. When have you ever known me to lose? What I want, I get, eventually. Not this time. Well, you just keep on thinking that, darling. Something to keep you warm on those long, uneventful nights at Southern Cross. that you changed your mind. I heard a lot of stories about you, J.R. I heard you were a snake, but I never realized just how low you'd sink. Did you come here to give me an evaluation of my character? No, J.R., I didn't. I just want to know why you bought up all my crude, what your terms are, so I can get back into business. Why don't you have a little eye opener? We can discuss this in a civilized manner. No, thank you. And this is not a civilized situation. How much do you want for the oil? Oh, I think you'll find my terms acceptable. You paid over market price. Otherwise, you wouldn't have got it. Now, why would I find that acceptable? You have no choice. See, I happen to know that you are shutting down your refineries. You've invested a fortune trying to box me in. Why? Is it vengeance because I protected Sue Ellen? It's business. Before I sell you a drop of my oil, I want Sue Ellen and John Ross off the Southern Cross Ranch, away from you and your son. You're holding my oil hostage in return for Sue Ellen? I don't give a damn for Sue Ellen. I want my son back. And I'm willing to sell you that oil at the going market price if you send those two packing. Then what? You think Sue Ellen's going to return to South Fork? <laughs> she hates you so much, she'd never do that. Oh, Mr. Farlow, I know that woman a lot better than you do. She can't make it on her own. Every time she runs away, it's to another man. And what do you care, anyway? With this deal, you can keep your refineries open, your employees employed, and not suffer any loss. No deal, J.R. Just how long do you think you're going to be able to keep open? With the terms you just offered me forever. She means nothing to you. You're wrong. I respect her. And she means everything to my son. And the child belongs with her. I'll break you. Better men than you have tried it. No, J.R., you're the one who's going broke. I was late getting here because I stopped to find out the latest report on oil prices. Down almost a dollar a barrel and still falling. And you're sitting on five million barrels. Now, your bankers are not going to be patient forever. Time your daddy gets back to South America, there just might not be a Ewing oil. 